welcome to everyone. Uh, we'll be gambling in around 7 p.m. I'm going to say this up front. Uh, we will not take offense if you do not choose to stay for the business portion of our meeting. We have a lot of entertaining uh, things on our agenda tonight. It's actually a long agenda, 35 agenda items. So I'm really uh, putting the board through a lot of pain on my last meeting. But um, we wanted to do a special proclamation to start. Um, uh, we, uh, you know, take uh, liberties to honor a lot of uh, good community organizations. And at the recommendation of Councilwoman Romeo, uh, we wanted to recognize a really good collaborative effort uh, that's really uh, represents the best of our town. So I'm going to ask the board members to join me up at the podium. So while the board is uh, coming up, and yes, I realize I'm backwards in the podium, but such is life. Trust me, <laughs> if the podium was further up, you'd be getting a lot of feedback, so we just make the best with this old room. Um, so the Irondequoit Community Cupboard is uh, an organization. I always brag, they're probably our most successful, um, uh, well-established, not-for-profit in town. If you talk about community-based organizations, um, they really are probably the one with the biggest footprint, and uh, that's been something that hopefully the town has not taken for granted over the past 30-plus uh, years, when uh, Debbie, actually, excuse me, 20, 25 years, when, since Debbie Evans uh, started it out of her garage. It's served as our primary food pantry, but has done so much more and so much that really we could not live without. I say this a lot about organizations, but there's some things we certainly could not live without here in Irondequoit. And that was only more brought to light during the pandemic. Um, just having the community covered as our beachhead, really, to work out of and partner with and making sure that families had access to emergency food during the pandemic. Um, again, I don't know what we would do without them and their core of volunteers, many of whom are here tonight. And it's nice seeing you not, uh, well, I, I miss the food distributions, but it's nice seeing you in here and not almost getting ran over by cars as we put food into trunks or uh, just trying to navigate that. My hope is Debbie shows up at some point because she's really, I call her Saint Debbie, and she's uh, someone that really is a guardian angel for so many in town, even though she doesn't even live in town anymore, uh, but uh, still serves the town probably more than anyone else. Um, so we're going to recognize the community cover, but in part we're recognizing a collaborative effort that has really supported the community cover, and that is the, uh, the community garden at uh, Vineyard Church, which is right down the road on, is it, it's Vineyard, right? Okay, I just want to make sure it's not vineyard. I'm, 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 that's a word you see and you, and you think about how it's phonetically uh, uh, dictated. But um, uh, at the Vineyard Church, uh, which is uh, located on Portland Avenue, uh, for uh, a good many years now, uh, the vineyard has donated space to allow uh, community gardens to be planted and tended, uh, not for aesthetics, but to make sure that hundreds of families in Irondequoit have access to fresh produce. And um, it complements what the food pantry does, because Debbie will tell you, you know, canned can goods are great. Proteins and vegetables are, that's, that's really this, a successful food pantry. And ensuring people have access to those nutritious meals uh, is so vital. Um, I want to just call, ask anyone who's a partner organization in this effort, uh, which includes, but is not limited to, uh, Irondequoit Rotary, um, the Irondequoit Conservation Board, Color Irondequoit Green, our Boy Scouts, as well as members from the ICC and Vineyard Church. If you're here, why don't you just come up and join me? And if anyone's here from the, I guess, I suppose the community covered, I can present this to you, but. Um, so so it, it's a labor of love, and these are all community members, but they're really volunteers who provide the kind of labor and blood, sweat, and tears to make sure that the garden um, uh, grows and is, uh, uh, the harvest is bountiful. And I actually have my first raised garden, vegetable garden in my backyard. Kale and peppers, those are the easy things. Uh, but uh, you know, if you ever go back there, it really is uh, pretty uh, magnificent just to see. And um, it's not easy, I know, and it takes a lot of constant attention. Um, but uh, on behalf of the town, I don't really know who I'm presenting this to. I'm presenting it to all of you. And perhaps it makes its way into the hands of 
of Debbie Evans, but I want to just read this into the record because I think it's important. And uh, this will be the last proclamation I get to draft and read, and I, I wanted to make it a good one. So, uh, whereas a strong community is made up of many individuals, families, and organizations that reside and help comprise the fabric of that community, and attendant to such concern, the town of Aranaquit is justly proud to acknowledge the contributions and achievements of such individuals and organizations. And whereas Aranaquit is proud to be home to many civic-minded organizations who often work collabor collaboratively to advance the collective good by co helping their neighbors. And whereas since 1995, the Aranaquit community covered hereafter the ICC has provided a variety of services to thousands of Aranaquit residents, emerging as one of the region's most effective food pantries and has been a trailblazer in developing innovative programs with other community stakeholders. And whereas for many years, Vineyard Church has generously donated land to the ICC for use as a community garden, which has helped ensure that Aranaquit families have access to fresh, nutritious produce. And whereas dozens of Aranaquit residents annually plant and tend the nearly three dozen garden beds at the vineyard, including volunteers from the Aranaquit Conservation Board, the Rotary Club, Color Aranaquit Green, the Boy Scouts, as well as members of the ICC and Vineyard Church. And whereas because of the collaborative work of these committed residents, Aranaquit has taken tr tremendous strides towards in combating food insecurity in all corners of our community, now let it be resolved that we, David, Supervisor David A. Seeley, and the town board on behalf of the entire town of Aranaquit do recognize all those who make possible the vineyard garden for the Aranaquit community covered and thank them for their commitment towards making better the Aranaquit community, so declared on this day, the 20th of July, 2021. So on behalf of the town of Aranaquit, to all of you, thank you very much. What a, what a treasure to have, and it would not be possible without all of your hard work and leadership. So thank you for representing and, and demonstrating what good citizenship is, serving as a good role model for all people in town. So on behalf of the town, thank you very much. I just want to say a couple of words. Obviously, I don't want to wait to the end of the meeting to do this because it'll probably be the town board will be left here. But I, um, we all know that this evening's Dave's last town board. Uh, his last evening is being our supervisor running a meeting. I, uh, the t as we um, say goodbye to Dave, we're going to have a plaque for him that says, for his eight years of dedication and service to town government and his many contributions to improve the Aranaquay community for future generations. Um, he could take this and put it in his new office, and we all wish Dave the best um, going forward in his new job. You know, I just want to say a couple things. Um, just a couple thank yous uh, about Dave and, um, you know, a few things of his accomplishments. This list goes on and on. This is only a few things. But, you know, our community center up at the mall, uh, that was all Dave. He wanted to redevelop the mall up there. Um, the project down at Seabreeze, um, making enhancements down there, which are all going to be, we're all going to, and everything we, everything Dave wants to do is for the good of the community, our, our residents. Um, and, you know, as we go forward, you know, we pave more roads under Dave. Um, you know, the, the list really goes on and on. Um, and, you know, when we take these kind of jobs, uh, you kind of want to, when you come, you want to kind of leave, leave a little, the situation better than when you, got there and I think Dave's done that Dave's done a real great job here um, and I you know I personally can't thank, thank Dave enough for what he's done for the town I mean it is a better place the town is extremely busy right now we got a lot going on and it's because of Dave's leadership so I just want to just want to thank Dave on behalf of the residents the staff I see his mom and dad his wife's here tonight thank you for coming um, and, you know, we just want to show a, a lot of appreciation uh, what Dave's done. One thing that when I take over in a couple of weeks, it's not going to be the same with me that it is with Dave. I don't have a drawer full of those fancy socks that he's wearing, okay? I don't, I'm pretty conservative when it comes to socks. <laughs> so I'm not going to have anything like that in my drawer. But, Dave, thank you. You know, on behalf of everybody, uh, we really appreciate what you've done for us and for the community. It's always been, uh, Dave's always been the type. 
He's here to serve, not be served. And uh, that shows all the compliments that the town has done. And we appreciate what you've done for us, Dave. Thank you. I'll be brief because if we don't start the meeting on time, everything we do is null and void. So for once, you've strategically gotten me to shut up. So uh, um, uh, this is uh, this is so bittersweet. So I, I hope to my, my goal is to, on an impromptu basis, add little anecdotes throughout the meeting just to make it really painful for the residents that, uh, and to endure a longer meeting. But um, I just want to thank John. Those were very nice words. Uh, uh, this is it's really hard hard day for me. Uh, you know, I, I, I was when I made this decision actually in the beginning of the year to not run for re-election, I really was dreading this day because I really have enjoyed uh, getting to you know, just experience government and democracy. And what a, what a gift, really. And what a gift to be able to work with so many, you know, just talented people. And, you know, I, I can't say enough about the town board here. We really are so blessed to have people who are smart, um, genuine, committed, uh, great public service, but more importantly, just uh, terrific people. And, uh, I've been blessed to have terrific colleagues on the board. Uh, the staff back there has been, uh, you know, really, I always say never assume that Dave Seeley is up in that office uh, making things happen. It's been a great team that is, uh, I think, the, the sum of all those parts has been some successes in the town with a lot more to go. And I just leave saying that we should be proud of what we have accomplished but always be looking to doing more uh, in, in line with the great motto of our state, uh, Excelsior, Ever Upward. I just want to thank my family. They were here five and a half years ago and I was sworn in. Uh, when I met Adrian, we had started dating. And she asked me what I did for a living, and I said, well, here's what I do now, but I might be getting into something different. And uh, so she's never known a Dave that wasn't uh, really in, uh, in this position. So she's been very patient, and thankfully, uh, th through our courtship, she agreed to marry me, and we're still here. So uh, it, hasn't, it hasn't ruined that, and nor, nor will anything. Um, in closing, I'll just say I... Uh, I really, I, I value democracy and I, I think a lot about the word civility. Uh, I think local governments really can, can kind of set an example for everything that we see in our society where people are not civil. And there's been many tense moments in this room over the past five and a half years and over the past probably for eternity. But everyone that's come in here, even if they've disagreed with what I believe, what the board believes or any course of action or disagree with their neighbors here as well. Um, I've been so proud that we've been able to conduct the business of the people with, with uh, respect for one another, uh, with civility, and mindful that really the hallmark of democracy is a tolerance for a differing opinions. So I think uh, local, at the local level, we really can set an example. But around quite, we're known for debate, but honestly, it's always just in the best interest. And at the end of the day, allowing everyone to be heard, uh, allowing their concerns to be addressed. That's really uh, good government at its best. So that's where it happens here. So just re recognize that there are people working hard every day to ensure that that does not go away. So that's all I got. Now you got 35 agenda items to get through. Um, <laughs> we are right at 7. Thank you very much, everyone. Again. gavel in and then I'll take about a five minute recess just to uh, allow you to if you don't want to stay for the meeting just to uh, exit just just be mindful that noise does this is the last time I'll say this as the parent uh, the, the noise does carry out so library voices outside we need to con conduct the uh, agenda so thank you everyone for being here and God bless
Okay, now for the fun stuff. One of my first meetings, I banged the gavel too hard and it pretty much exploded and flew into the second room of a uh, second row of uh, the audience. So I've become a little bit more gentle, but uh, I'm going to now call to order the regular town board meeting for July 20th, 2021. Uh, visitors are invited to join the board and rising to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America. America. Into the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Councilwoman Freeman? Present. Councilman Pritikone? Here. Councilwoman Romeo? Here. Yep. Councilman Wayner? <laughs> Here. Jump the gun. <laughs> Supervisor Seely? Here. Attorney for the town? Here. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, for starters, can I just ask uh, if someone from the staff can bring the public input sign-in sheet? Just hand it to Diana, who can pass it down. Uh, thank you. Um, so uh, we have uh, on our agenda tonight, thank you, welcome everyone. Uh, we have a pretty uh, uh, large agenda. You know, We're not in the 40s, but it's a pretty healthy agenda. Uh, we do have two public hearings tonight, uh, one of which for a proposed local law. Um, that'll take place at 7.35 p.m. And we have another public hearing regarding a special use permit for 2590 Culver Road. Um, we do, their sign-in sheets are, I do have them, and I know some people have signed in for public input of the public hearings. I think some people might have signed in for the public input wishing to address the public hearings. Generally, if you're new to these meetings, we do the public input on a, any, any topic you wish to address the board. That happens at the beginning of the meeting uh, once I shut up with my opening remarks. Uh, then we'll convene the public hearings at 735. So if you're here to talk about those pending issues before the board, uh, you may um, just come up. I have people signed up, but if you wish to speak, you can come to the board and address us. Um, with that, uh, we will actually move on to public input. Um, we have two people signed up. I believe they signed up this afternoon, so I'm not sure if they're in attendance. But first is uh, Sebastian uh, Kakamo. Sure, sir. Um, 108 Andrea Lane. And you can just come up, and uh, I think we have your name, if I hopefully I said it right. Um, and uh, the floor is yours, sir. Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, I've lived in the community for about 30 years, or actually more than that. So um, I, uh, every now and then I'll have uh, some dog poop on my property. And every now and then it happens, no big deal. Well, this has been going on for over a month. So at that point, you're cleaning up. It's disgusting. It's not mine. And you're like, okay, it's happened repeatedly for over a month now. So what I do, I call police. I say, can you guys do anything or do you have any advice for this? And they say, well, there's actually there's no law against it. In the city, there's ordinances against it, but not there's no law. They're like, but you could check with the town. Maybe they have an ordinance against something like that. So I check with the town, and the town's like, well, actually, there's no ordinance against that. So what do you do now? So actually, I've been trying, I've been waking up really early in the morning to catch this guy because I've been <laughs> noting when it happens, and it's ridiculous, but yeah. And I have an idea when they come. Actually, I spoke to a few neighbors about it, and I have a pretty good idea who it is. That's what led me to get up that early to do that because that's when he comes about. But once again, I have to catch him. I've been looking at the cameras, see what's going on, but, I mean, it's just it's got out of hand. Um. So what we can do is uh, internally we can both confirm what what is permissible under state law. You're talking about curbing your dog laws, and I know you see them in some communities that have them. And you're right, we currently don't have don't have a law in the books. I've always I, I, this has come up before, and I know enforcement is hard. It's challenging, but it's and I live in a neighborhood where sometimes I have the same issue, and I, I understand it's very frustrating and. Sometimes you wonder if it's being done out of spite, probably. Um, but uh, maybe you just have a nice lawn that the dog likes. But nonetheless, it shouldn't happen. Uh, we wish it didn't happen. And we certainly can take it under consideration. Uh, that's ultimately up to the board to, to consider advancing a local local law if they deem to do so and to amend the code. So I think we've heard you, and uh, we will certainly take this under consideration. Thank you for listening. Oh, thank you. Uh, next signed up is, um, is, is Rick Goodyear, but Rick references I think the uh, the public hearing so I'm not sure if Rick is here but uh, he might be uh, instead speaking at the public hearing is Rick here he's not does anyone else wish to address the board for public input minding that we have two public hearings at 735 okay with that public input is now closed for the evening and we can move on to the financial report madam comptroller 
Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. The 2021 financial results as of June 30th. With 50% of the year elapsed, the town's total expenses are slightly lower than budget at 49%, a sum of $18,604,000. Encumbrances are $3,504,000, and actual expenses total $15,099,000. Actual expenses equate to 39.8% of budget, while encumbrances make up the remaining 9.2%. Encumbrances represent the commitments for services, supplies, and commodities that will be needed during the year. The general fund expenses are favorable to budget at 47.2% or $10,966,000. The actual expenditures are 40.9% of budget or $9,509,000. The remaining 6.3% is due to encumbrances of $1,457,000. Contained within the general fund encumbrances are IT equipment, insurance, general townwide street lighting, attorney fees, and other contracted expenses throughout the town. Collectively, the expenses on the highway funds of $3,426,000 are higher than the 50% of the year that has elapsed at 60.5%. Actual expenses within the highway funds are 34.1% of budget, or $1,932,000, Encumbrances of one million four hundred ninety-four thousand account for the remainder. The costs result from substantial expenses and encumbrances for gas, fuel, salt, paving services, and materials and equipment parts. Expenses in the library are below budget at one million two hundred thirty-seven thousand, or forty-six point eight percent of budget. The sewer fund expenses of two million thirty-one thousand are forty-eight point eight percent of budget. Actual expenses equate to 40.1% of budget, or $1,670,000, while encumbrances of $361,000 account for the remaining 8.7%. Expenses in the stormwater drainage are approximately 38.7% of budget, a total of $362,000. Actual expenses are $271,000, or 29% of budget, while encumbrances account for 9.7%. Actual expenditures, excluding encumbrances for the entire town as well as each of the town's three major funds, are below budget, or are below the 50% of the year that has elapsed. Actual townwide expenses represent 39.8% of budget, while actual expenses for the general fund are 40.9%, consolidated highway fund 34.1%, and the sewer fund 40.1%. The general fund has received revenue of $14,950,000, or 66.6% .6 of budget. At the end of June, 100% of real estate tax of $11,799,000 has been collected. 91.7% of payment in lieu of tax revenue is in. An additional $25,000 is due in October and will bring that line item to budget. Two months of sales tax totaling $896,000, or 18.8%, and three months of mortgage tax equal to $272,000, or 30.2% of budget have been received to date. Other major revenue sources such as franchise cable fees and AIM-related payments are due later in the year. The town total revenue and appropriated fund balance for the first half of the year equate to $27,424,000, or 74.2%. Real estate taxes across funds are $18,135,000. At month end, the library has recorded revenue of $2,575,000, or 97.4%. 80.5%, or $4,484,000 of revenue has been verified by the highway. The sewer fund has documented $4,064,000, or 99.6% of revenue. Stormwater drainage has received 97.4% of its budgeted <coughs> revenue at $868,000. Page 3 of the financial <coughs> report presents the second quarter year-to-date summary in comparison to the prior six years. Regarding expenditures by fund, which are included on the top third of the page, the percent of total budget spent and encumbered is 49% which is higher than last year, but on par with previous years. The middle third of the page contains the relevant sources of revenue for the general fund, and the bottom third of the page are second quarter revenue comparisons of all other funds, with the last line reflecting the total collective revenue and fund balance for the town. 
the 2021 general fund revenue of 66.6% exceeds the two preceding years, as does the town-wide revenue of 74.2%. This concludes the financial report for the month of June 2021. Thank you, Madam Comptroller. Any questions or comments on the financial report? Hearing none, uh, I'll take a motion to accept the report. Move. And a, and a, and a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Financial report is accepted. Approval of minutes. June 8, 2021, the workshop meeting. Motion to approve. Moved. And a second? <clears throat> and a second? Uh, start asking from from the audience. If, uh, <laughs> any questions or comments? Revisions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. June 15, 2021, the regular town board meeting. Motion to approve. Moved. And a second. Second. Uh, Pete, you actually should not second this. Right. What? You, uh, you, you're going to abstain, so I think you should not oh, second Oh, I'm sorry. This. Second. second. Thank you, um, Ms. Freeman. Um, any questions, comments, or revisions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Mr. Weiner in the abstention? You abstain? Yes. Okay, just want to make sure. I don't want to speak for you. Um, okay, uh, we can now, Madam Clerk, move on to items for board action under appointments number three. We're almost there, Ragusa family, okay? <laughs> Item number three, filling a town justice vacancy. Motion to adopt. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. Uh, this is a bittersweet resolution, um, one I wish we were not passing, uh, but nevertheless, i um, very happy that we are passing to a, a, a certain degree because uh, uh, after losing Judge Janier, uh, suddenly and tragically, someone who'd served our town for a good many years, uh, not just as a town justice, but an all-around citizen, uh, it has left a vacancy in their town courts. Um, Judge Janier was up for re-election this year. Uh, how the, the election process works is, um, whenever a candidate does pass away, the political party is responsible for putting a candidate on the ballot. Um, the Democratic Party selected Jennifer Whitman DeVoe, uh, to uh, be on the ballot in Judge Janier's place. Um, and generally, we wouldn't do an appointment um, this close to an election, but Ms. Whitman DeVoe is not running with opposition. Uh, as such, she will be the judge come January 1st. Our courts are starting to pick up, and even though we cannot imagine that courtroom without Judge Janier, uh, I think there is a need to have a third judge there again. And in fairness to Ms. DeVoe, uh, it, it, it's, uh, I think she is entitled to the opportunity to start and really get the ground running. Um, so with that, i just uh, excited to uh, advance this appointment. Mr. Whitman DeVoe would be the first female judge in uh, Aranaquai Town Court, which is very exciting. She has a very distinguished career both in the district's attorney's office as well as working as an attorney for the state. Uh, all, all around, she is just a very thoughtful, caring resident who I think will serve with distinction uh, in our town courts. Uh, one one uh, nuance to this is this resolution would take effect August 1st. Her appointment would be effective. Um, any questions or comments? Okay, we miss you, Joe, but uh, I, I know you're happy that Jen's taking your place. So with that, I'll ask all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Congratulations, Jennifer. You are in the Adirondacks. I'm not sure if you're oh. tuning in, but uh, oh. congratulations. Item number four, authorizing the appointment of a full-time office clerk four in the Recreation Department. Motion to adopt. Move. And a second. Second. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Hall, explanation, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, this candidate, Shanae um, Bullock, we would like to bring forward for our office clerk four. And she would work at the front desk, um, currently at our community center and then at the new recreation center, helping to manage um, in conjunction with Megan Hoffman, our office manager, manage the front desk employees, the reservations, um, the program registrations, and as we look to move to the new community center, we want to make sure our staff is on board and trained and ready to go. Um, Shanae comes to us with some customer service background in addition to being a legal assistant and paralegal, and we feel that she brings um, a lot of background and experience and will help us be successful as we move forward. Thank you, Ms. Hall. Any questions on the uh, resolution? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Is Ms. Bullock here tonight, Katrina? 
She is not. My no. eyesight deceives me. So, um, well, congratulations to her, and we uh, are happy to bring her on to the team and wish her the most success in a great uh, and growing recreation department. Madam Clerk. Item number five, author authorizing the appointment of a full-time labor foreman in the Department of Public Works. Motion to adopt. Move. Move. And a second. Second. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Freeman. Uh, Mr. Kiley, explanation, please. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. The resolution before the board this evening uh, before the appointment of Mr. Ron Ragusa to the position of labor foreman within the Department of Public Works. Uh, Mr. Ragusa, an 18-year veteran employee of the department, um, uh, was the candidate selected by the interview committee consisting of myself, uh, Deputy Commissioner McGee, and labor foreman Albert. Uh, I've had the pleasure to work with Mr. Ragusa for my entire tenure here with the town uh, and uh, strongly recommend him to this position. Uh, the labor foreman position is the uh, third highest uh, position within uh, the Department of Public Works, one that has great responsibility uh, for 24-7, 365 coverage for um, any roadway-related, uh, sewer-related, drainage-related, tree, uh, the list can go on. Uh, truly, we are the first uh, frontline defense for any natural uh, type disasters. Uh, and uh, with that comes great responsibility to which I think Mr. Ragusa has the ability for, uh, the drive for, uh, and the intellect for. Uh, I'm very uh, excited and happy to put his name forth. We did re uh, receive several applicants and interviewed several worthy candidates uh, that said, Mr. Ragusa uh, is certainly a cut above the rest and uh, very enthusiastic to put his name before the board this evening. Thanks, Bob. Um, any questions or comments? No. Good luck. Ron, I just want to congratulate you. It's well deserved. Uh, thank you for your past service and for your uh, future service. I know the kids are quiet now because yeah. they know something's going <laughs> Kids, raise your hand if you're proud of your daddy. <laughs> there you think are. we should vote yes on this? <laughs> Thumbs up? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Congratulations, Ron, and uh, I'll take a, a, a roll call. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Ron, please rise. <laughs> All right. You, you, and you are not required to stay, Ron, if you do not want to. You're welcome to, but I have a feeling the majority of the family might vote uh, to leave, so no, no, uh, no fault. Uh, Madam Clerk, we're going to skip uh, table resolution number six and move on to resolution for board action number seven. Item number seven, authorizing the appointment of a justice clerk in the courts. Motion to adopt. Ooh. And a second. Second. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pertico. Mr. Marion, an explanation, please. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, after conducting several interviews, incoming Judge Jennifer Whitman DeVoe would like to submit Michelle M. Rast to the board for consideration. Uh, Michelle brings five years of legal experience, including four years in two local town courts. Uh, as such, she is well-versed in all of the systems and procedures of the court and will make a well-qualified addition to our court office and will uh, do much to ensure the incoming judge's success. Thank you. Any questions on the resolution? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number eight. Authorizing the appointment of a full-time light laborer in the building maintenance department. Motion to adopt. Move. And a second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Kiley. An explanation, please. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, I'm very pleased to put forth the name of uh, Frank Polito for the position of light labor within the building maintenance division uh, of the highway department. Uh, Frank is an employee uh, who we have uh, uh, known in the past, uh, seasonally here within the town of Arondequoit. Um, uh, having served within uh, DPW uh, for a, a summer season, uh, Frank returned to us uh, for duties uh, that have been varied uh, throughout his uh, short tenure during this uh, summer season, uh, filling in in a variety of different roles. Uh, this position is a position that's split uh, between Town Hall and the future community center uh, at Skyview and the Ridge. Uh, and Mr. Polito certainly has the uh, drive and willingness to uh, uh, put forth uh, our best efforts uh, towards the uh, custodial duties and maintenance duties within both this building uh, that we sit in tonight and the future community center. Uh, very uh, happy uh, to put forth his name before the board this evening. Thank you, Commissioner. Any questions or comments from the board? Uh, Frank, I just want to congratulate you. Uh, um, we look forward to you coming aboard. It's a good department, um, and we're, we're excited to have you here. Um, and uh, 
I'll take a roll call. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Congratulations, Frank. You got to stand and wave to your adoring public. <laughs> it's the only. We, you know, Frank, we used to do these at the end of the meeting, so you would have had to have stayed through the entire meeting, but I moved the appointments up. It's one of my proudest achievements is moving the appointments <laughs> up to A. They used to be under human resources, so you're, you're welcome. Um, uh, we have uh, 10 more minutes to our public hearing. We can now move on to uh, community development. Item number nine, calling for a public hearing on the matter of granting a special use permit for 2180 East Ridge Road in a C business district. Uh, motion to adopt. Move. And a second. Second. Thank you. Ms. Ivers, an explanation, please. Yes, this is uh, to accept the application from Burn Dairy, for the development of Burn Dairy. The special use permit is required for the uh, gasoline fueling stations, the um, associated um, uh, dairy or the st convenience store is um, uh, permitted by right in this district. So this is accepting the application, referring it to the planning board for review and comment, and also um, setting the public hearing date for next month. Thanks. And, and for the record, um, this is C Business uh, District, which is a permitted this is a, use. Uh, yeah, C Business, so it's a special use permit for the gas uh, gasoline Understood. fueling and, station. And this would be for 2180 East Ridge Road, which many of you know is the former library, which uh, Pern Dairy purchased at auction and the pr process of closing from the town. So they've acquired that property. It's a permitted use. Uh, we will review the special use permit and the board next month will uh, weigh it and uh, determine if it's prudent to move forward. Um, anything else, uh, Carrie? Any no. questions for Ms. Ivers? Good question. Yes. Um, Carrie, were we able to find any information out about the, the possible future transition from Petro to other alternate fuels? Um, so the, the applicant, that, that question was actually raised at sketch plan. They haven't made formal application to the planning board yet. Um, the, uh, they, were, they were not making any current plans for future gasoline tank removal at this time. That's certainly something that you could address with the applicant. I'm happy to send um, that communication and have them be prepared at next month's meeting to address that issue. Thank you. And um, did not get it really any helpful information from DEC. <laughs> Um, just the regulations, which really didn't tell me much uh, about your question. Um, okay, so this was set the public hearing for next month. Any further questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 10, awarding a contract for development and administration of a first-time home buyers program. Motion to adopt. Move. And a second. Second. Thanks, uh, Mr. Weiner. Ms. Ivers, an explanation, please. Um, the town issued a request for proposals um, from qualified um, providers to um, carry out a first-time home buyer program. This is um, a program that's being funded through funds received from the American Rescue Plan Act. Um, the town received two proposals. Um, there was a RFP committee that reviewed the proposals, interviewed the, uh, the um, responding um, organizations and the um, RFP committee is recommending us moving forward with the Urban League of Rochester. Um, they have a well-qualified team um, put together a really well-thought program and, and proposal. They have um, existing home buyer programs currently operating in other areas and can easily adapt and so this proposal or this uh, resolution is moving forward with task one of the uh, proposed activity to um, enhance or finalize the program um, uh, development and finalize the program to move forward with a future recommendation to this town board on how that program will be operated and implemented here in the town. Thanks, Ms. Ivers. Uh, any questions from the board? And again, uh, uh, you know, I think uh, we've, we've talked about this for the past several weeks, and I think we want to be thoughtful. I think we all uh, uh, applaud the, the kind of the end, end goals and objectives here and want to just make sure we're putting together the most thoughtful program with the highest amount of efficacy and um, so I think from here we would move to uh, work with um, the Urban League to put together uh, and get their get their take and work with other stakeholders to determine you know what the best program is what it looks like how to best allocate those funds towards residents to help with not just home ownership but making sure once people get in their homes they're able to maintain their homes knowing that uh, and there's uh, always uh, challenges with that. Um, so this would uh, uh, provide up to $16,000 for those, uh, as Carrie said, task one uh, final program development. 
Any further questions? Yeah. Um, Mr. Supervisor, I just want to make a, a comment. Yep. Um, Kiri, I want to thank you and your team for um, really working hard to put this together and to turn it around. Um, it's a, an excellent program, and I'm looking forward. Thank you. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution. Aye. I abstain. Abstain. Ms. Romeo abstains. So four eyes, one abstention. Uh, resolution is adopted, Madam uh, Clerk. Item number 11, authorizing the annual audit of the town courts. Motion to adopt. Moved. And a second? Second. second. Uh, I'll give it to Ms. Freeman. Uh, um, Ms. Uh, Marsh, explanation, please. Thank you. This resolution is for the board to affirm that the town court audit for the year ended um, December 31st, 2020 has been completed as part of the town's annual audit process. A separate document has been issued summarizing the results of the audit. And this audit is required by the New York State Office of Court Administration. Thank you, Ms. Marsh. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And the resolution is adopted. Item number 12, authorizing a supplemental agreement with the Housing Council at Pathstone for housing counseling services to low and moderate income residents as approved through the Community Development Block Grant during August 1st, 2021 through July 31st, 2022. Motion to adopt. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Comptroller, Madam Comptroller, why don't you just explain kind of in context of the next several resolutions, what, what we're doing here, and then as we go through each one, that's pretty self-explanatory through the title, okay? Okay. Um, so the next uh, two, three, four, six resolutions that I have are to um, authorize agreements with various um, organizations to provide services um, to the town residents. Um, these have all been approved through our CDBG process. Um, we have a CDBG committee that meets um, to discuss them, and then they're presented to the board, um, and, and they've all gone through the whole process. We've had a public hearing on them. Um, the first one that is up is um, actually a supplemental agreement with the Housing Council. This is a supplemental agreement because this agreement is funded with um, the CDBG supplemental money we received for the COVID Act. We're just swimming in federal dollars. <laughs> <it's> like. <laughs> um, and this, um, this contract is for $20,000, and this um, was authorized by the town board. The allocation was authorized last month at the June meeting by the town board. Thanks, and this is the final step in our process with our CDBG program. Uh, this uh, this program provides uh, early uh, intervention um, uh, services to uh, residents through the Housing Council for low and moderate income residents. Uh, and again, it's supplemental award of twenty thousand um, dollars. Any questions or comments? Hear me none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. The resolution is adopted. Item number 13, authorizing an agreement with the Catholic Family Center for non-medical home service support to the elderly as approved through the Community Development Block Grant during August 1st, 2021 through July 31st, 2022. Motion to adopt. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. Through our CDBG funding, uh, as through the process Comptroller Marsh described, uh, this would award uh, authorize a contract in the amount of $26,100 to the Catholic Family Center for non-home support services to elderly residents. It's a good program we have to promote independent living uh, for residents, particularly those in, uh, still in their single-family home. So it's a nice program that we're always uh, glad to maintain within our CDBG uh, arsenal. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution is adopted. Item number 14, authorizing an agreement with the Arundaquai Community Cupboard to provide healthy food choices to low-income residents as approved through the Community Development Block Grant during August 1st, 2021 through July 31st, 2022. Motion to adopt. Move. And a second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Winner. Uh, through the process, Comptroller Marsh described two resolutions ago, this would uh, uh, authorize a contract using CDBG federal dollars to the Ironicway Community Cupboard and the amount of $22,000. Uh, this helps fund their weekend backpack program, which is, I talked about their innovative spirit in the beginning of the meeting. And this is something that's helped ensure that children, particularly low-income children, uh, when they're not in school, uh, may, in those two days over the weekend, have access to nutrition. And it's a great program that we've helped grow over the years and something that I think is a terrific asset to the town that we're happy to support. Any questions or comments? All 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 15, authorizing an agreement with Lifespan of Greater Rochester for the Home Safe Home for Seniors Program of, serv of support services to the elderly as approved through the Community Development Block Grant during August 1st, 2021 through July 31st, 2022. Motion to adopt. Vote. And a second. Second. Uh, thank you, Mr. Perticone. Um, this would authorize a contract using uh, CDBG uh, Community Development Block Grant dollars uh, to help fund the lifespan of Greater Rochester's uh, support service for elderly residents in the amount of $15,000. This is similar to the other program uh, promoting independent living to ensure uh, for projects such as uh, guy, uh, grab bars, et cetera. Um, I think it's a good model for even, even more investments we might be able to mirror with our federal dollars, but this has always been a good program and part of the bedrock of our uh, services offered to our older residents. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 16, authorizing an agreement with Lifespan of Greater Rochester for transportation services to the elderly as approved through the Community Development Block Grant during August 1st, 2021 through July 31st, 2022. Motion to adopt. Moved. And a second. Second. So, Adam Clerk, what did you do? What, Madam Comptroller, what did Barb do to anger you so much? These <laughs> long titles. Um, <laughs> Um, well done, Barb. But anyway, uh, second to last, the penultimate CDBG contract resolution. This would award uh, funding to Lifespan of Greater Rochester to administer our senior transportation program, which is constantly evolving and looking to become more user-friendly. This would appropriate $17,693. I will note that there was another supplemental appropriation for the program. So the, pro the program will use more than this in, in CDBG funding. And this is a good program. I think we continue to look to grow. Uh, again, independent living is key and to be able to provide residents uh, that accessible uh, alternative to transportation for not just medical needs, but non-medical needs uh, is a goal I think we've been aspiring to. And now that we're out of COVID, hopefully this program can continue to grow. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 17, authorizing an agreement with the Housing Council at Pathstone for housing counseling services to low and moderate income residents as approved through the Community Development Block Grant during August 1st, 2021 through July 31st, 2022. Motion to adopt. Move. And a second. Second. Thank you. This actually parlays off resolution number 12. Uh, but this uses our current year's allocation for CDBG funding. And this is important. I think we're enhancing this program because we do now with you have a, um, you know, a looming perhaps a foreclosure crisis, forbearance, uh, the, the, the eviction, eviction, et cetera. But um, we want to make sure that if that is looming, we have, um, we're ready to uh, do some proactive outreach to folks who are in pre-foreclosure um, to give them alternatives and guidance. And this is what this program does. I think it's it's um, bracing for the worst, hoping for the best. But in case we do get a, another uh, um, instance with a lot of foreclosures like that, which we saw in the early 2010s or late 2000s, uh, the Housing Council has uh, enhanced uh, capacity to deal with that. So this would fund that uh, in a greater amount for the coming year. Any questions or comments? Quick question, Mr. Supervisor. Well, we have the captured audience of our entire community. Is there a place you could direct folks at home who are listening who might need those services? Yes, um, aronacoit.org. Um, uh, there's a link to all of our CDBG programs. If you enter CDBG in the search, you will be able to get access to that. And oh, you can also uh, interact directly with the Housing Council. But as always, we try and promote those and we'll make sure that it's adequately uh, promoted on the website. And, and as we move forward, I think with the federal dollars, the public information side really is critical and the need to get the information out there. So it's always a goal and one that we can never uh, concentrate enough on, frankly. Uh, any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution is adopted. That gets us to item for board action number 18, which we will take up after public our two hearing. public hearings. Public hearing number one on the matter of a proposed local law to amend Chapter 235 of the Town Code to adopt requirements for tobacco retail dealers and vapor products dealers. Motion to open public uh, hearing. Moved. And a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Uh, the hearing is now open. We did not have anyone signed up for this hearing, but after you hear my explanation, if anyone does wish to address the board, uh, they're ha welcome to do so. Um, I just uh, be clear, there is no intent to adopt this local law tonight. We, in all likelihood, will close the public hearing, but still accept public feedback uh, in the interim between now and next month. Um, this legislation was developed after working with the American Lung Association and Drug Free Irondequoit. Um, there has been a growing uh, concern and proliferation with uh, the availability of newer forms of nicotine use and drug free Ronequit has been a terrific partner with the town in trying to promote uh, alternatives to uh, addictive behaviors, healthy living. Um, I think there's a need to monitor and control and make sure that we're not uh, allowing a growing proliferation particularly of these uh, vaping uh, retail sites. But also mindful that I think our town probably has enough places to buy tobacco as well. So this puts into place, uh, it proposes uh, new uh, zoning requirements uh, for tobacco retailer dealers and vapor product dealers. Uh, under this definition of tobacco retail dealer, that does include um, the vaping. It, it, as long as it, under state law, if it contains nicotine, it's technically considered tobacco under state law. Don't ask why, but it probably made it easier. Uh, this would say that um, any new retail outlet cannot be located within 1,000 feet of the nearest point of property line of a school, playground, or child care facility. State law has it at 500 feet. We're increasing that to 1,000 feet. Uh, it says that any part of the property line of the tobacco retail dealer or vapor products dealer is not located within 700 feet of the nearest public entrance of one or more existing tobacco retail dealers or vapor product dealers. Uh, this does allow... Uh, um, it's a, I, mean, I can't use the word grandfathered and it's unacceptable, but if people do have pending applications before the town board, uh, it would not withstand that as long as that application is uh, active upon adoption. Um, but this looks forward, it's forward thinking, and I think it's mindful that we do need to uh, make sure that we are promoting healthy, healthy alternatives in, uh, in town, and I think take some sensible steps towards doing that. Uh, would anyone from the public wish to address the board on this matter? I will just note that we did receive a, a memorandum of support from Drug Free Irondequoit. I want to thank the American Lung Association as well um, for providing some, uh, really some good information about what other communities are doing. Um, we elected to go the zoning route versus the uh, creating kind of a bureau, bureaucratic red tape route through a town licensure. I think this is the, uh, achieves those similar outcomes that um, a licensure would. So um, I'll leave it at that and I uh, will actually take a motion to close public hearing. And a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Public hearing is now closed. Madam Clerk. Public hearing number two on the matter of approving a special use permit for 2590 Culver Road in a C business district. Motion to open public hearing. Moved. And a second? Second. second. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, the hearing is now open. Uh, John, I'm just going to let Carrie give a brief explanation. For some, you can be seated there if you want. Uh, uh, Carrie is just going to give some context of what we're reviewing, why we're reviewing it, and then you can explain the application. Carrie. Uh, thank you. So the application, the spe special use permit application was required um, because the project, which is a, a Quickly's gas station, has gasoline fueling stations, and it also has a self-serve um, car wash facility. Both of those are listed as special use permitted items in the C business district. Um, the board will recall, recall that a application re for rezoning um, was made and the board rezoned the property to C business to allow for this development to move through the um, subsequent uh, planning and zoning review process. And so the special use permit is um, required before they can move forward to subsequent construction of the project. Um, it already has received site plan review and approval through the planning board. Thank you, uh, Ms. Ivers. I'll now invite the applicant to, actually, is that, first of all, does any board members have any questions for Ms. Ivers? Sorry, sorry, guys. Okay, uh, we can hear from the applicant, and then we have, if we have questions for either, we'll, uh, we'll um, leave it open. Just so folks know, if you have signed up for the public hearing, generally we allow the applicant to speak and then residents to address the board. 
um, if, if we have a few people signed up. Uh, generally, if people do have comments, we allow the applicant then afterwards to address those comments, whether they came from the board or members of the public. So uh, can you both just introduce yourself and your affiliation with the project? Sure. Good evening, Mr. Supervisor. My name is John Sharaba. I'm with Landtech. We're representing PEM LLC, who is owner and operator of Quickly's Convenience Stores. With me tonight is Lou Terranoli, who is the director of real estate for Quickly's and can speak to the operation of the store. Uh, the Quickly's organization has over 20 stores in western New York. Um, similar fashion what we're proposing this evening and operates them all privately uh, and is able to contact the owner's uh, family-run business uh, with any issues that arise. Um, Carrie's presentation was very descriptive. Uh, we have uh, worked closely with the town of Ronicoy, uh, the planning board, and received final approval last month. We've also worked with uh, Monroe County DOT related to upgrades that we're doing on Culver Road. We are proposing a new signalized intersection at the uh, corner of uh, Brookdale, which is directly across the street. Um, this project quickly is, is developing basically the area of the existing Wambach Farm Market building. Uh, we are not developing any lands further back uh, that, that may uh, be impacted in the future. So we have a private com common driveway with those future lands in development. And uh, with that, I'll take any questions you have or the public. Um, thank you. I have a, a few questions. Uh, obviously, this this pro this property was rezoned C a business last year, um, with with this concept in mind. And now here we are. It's a permitted use under C business. We have to determine whether or not the special use uh, permit should be issued. I think um, I have a few questions just with regards to both the car wash and the gas station particularly around hours of operation. Can you just tell me what the intended hours of operation for both would be? Yeah, we, t we talked about this in detail with the planning board also. The, uh, the C store with gas would be a 24 hour operation along with the car wash. There was a question with regarding the uh, exterior vacuums and those hours would be limited to 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Okay. Which was the discussion with the planning board. What, no, what amount of Obviously, this is um, we have <coughs> gas stations and car washes located in different types of, you know, we have it on our primary commercial corridor. Uh, this is an area, obviously, it abuts a highway, but also abuts a, a residential neighborhood pretty closely. Um, can you just describe the noise level of the of the car wash? I know the vacuums are allowed, but the, the car wash in particular. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, what we uh, presented, and I'll restate, uh, was we from the manufacturer of the car wash. We could look at it two different ways. We could look at it with the doors being open or the doors being closed. So taking the more conservative approach, we evaluated the noise levels with the doors being open and, and the cars going in. So if you extrapolate what the decibel levels are, take into account the amount of feet between that and the residential area, the noise at that point when you get to the residential area, and we, we gave supporting documentation to the plane, would be at like a conversation rustling of leaves type type noise, so it would be, be no more than that. It's several hundred feet from the residential area, and with that residential area, we're adding a three-foot berm, additional trees to add to the existing landscape trees that are there now. Where would that berm be? Would that, what side of the uh, it would be proposed the south service side road? Of the pro Thank uh, you. Of, would it, of the private road. Okay. The south side of the private road. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll yield to any board members who might have questions. I'm not sure. Maybe I could direct this to Carrie. Do we have other gas stations and car washes that are open 24 hours? So I'm actually going to, I'm not, I don't recall, I don't think that the car wash, car washes on, I'm not sure. I don't want to answer definitively. I did some, Goog I did some Googling. So I have some, I, I know <laughs> um, both, uh, now both the Delta Sonic and, and, um, Royal. Royal, which are, are employee operated, they close at nine. The twenty four, the the non employee operated one is twenty four hours right now. Um, with regards to gas stations, I think we have five that are twenty four. We talked about four last month, but I forgot. I believe Sunoco on Titus is twenty four hours as well. Um, I know that's been a a problem. Um, you know, it's uh, and having done overnights with with our with our police, I know gas stations can be an area where people um, congregate after hours, um, and that's obviously gas stations stay open and people need gas at all hours. But have you had an experience uh, just, I, I don't know where your other locations are, but I know you're on Webster, but just experience with possible um, keeping that in, in mind or, or what, you know, your experiences with staying open after, after yeah, hours? Our experience actually is uh, to be open 24 hours, it's a safer experience. 
because we'll have employees in the store, we'll have this, uh, the situation lit. You mentioned uh, uh, the police force, they, they come in there for coffee and they're in and around the site at, at those off hours. So being 24 hours is actually adds to the safety rather than having to close down. That's been our experience. And wh where are your other locations currently in Monroe County? We have uh, Webster, uh, we have Avon, we're in Irondequoit, um, we're in uh, Brighton that we're uh, currently going to be re re redoing now. So those are some, some of them. That car wash in Brighton? No, oh, I'm sorry, uh, car wash. I, th I thought uh, you yeah. just, just... No, I know, I just I know Brighton and car wash is a... Henrietta. Understood. Is Thank you. So um, any questions from my colleagues? Um, you know, we'll, we'll have to, I think, discuss. I just want to just allow you to answer if you, if you do have concerns that the board will consider hours of operation for the car wash. Would that be um, something you would be able to work with us on? Or I, I know you have a business model, but. We, we uh, could work with you on the hours of the car wash. We strongly would like to need to have the 24 hours on the okay. C store. Uh, for, for that presence and that safety feature. When you say see, so the convenience, do you the say convenience. the convenience store? And so obviously if the convenience store is open, then it's Correct. implied that the gas station would be open. Correct. Sometimes you, the, fueling the, station. the store closes, but the fueling stations stay open. Okay, um, thank you. I appreciate that. I, I think we'll have to uh, discuss that a little bit. We're probably going to tab table the uh, resolution. I don't know if board members have any thoughts on, on that. Um, why, don't we allow, why don't we hear from our uh, residents who have uh, wanted to speak? because we want to give them an opportunity to voice their concerns. Uh, I have, um, we had uh, one person signed up and another person signed up in public input. Uh, Mary Wells. Um, oh, there you are. Hello, Mary. And you're at 897 Whitlock. Okay, you can come up. <laughs> Don't be shy. Uh, that's okay. We, we, uh, you can, you're welcome to come up. We're not, we're not going to not give you the opportunity to speak. I, I wouldn't dare. Um, Go ahead, Mary. I come in very late in this process because I just moved in March and uh, have had to move in and that kind of thing. My primary concern, um, and I know this area because I grew up in Rochester and I, you know, I, I know Culver and I know, you know, 104 and the traffic is a real concern and I don't know whether it's come up in your other discussions. Um, but even leaving my house, even leaving Whitlock, which is the first, it's the last uh, street to the south on Culver before you get to Wombox, the cars were stopped at the light to get onto 104. That's tonight at about 6.15, all the way past the Wombach property line. Not quite to Whitlock, but it's a real concern. Um, and again, I apologize for coming in so late. This is my first time being here. That's all right. Um, to apologize. Hopefully, um, I will have a chance to meet with uh, your community development uh, zoning planning folks to see what the site plan is and get some more information on it before a final decision is made. And I don't know when that Und is going to come. Understood. And just a little context. And it's fine that you it's, you're not coming in late. This is a public hearing. It's, it's a, we have a lot of public the hearings process. for one project, and you can argue it might be redundant. But, you know, when we were looking at this, I think, last year, one thing that was important was that location of that, that traffic signal. Um, and I, we'd heard that people from Whitlock were having uh, uh, concerns about that. And I think that w that was taken into account, installing that traffic signal, not on Whitlock, but on Brookdale, which would lead to the service road, which would slow slow the cars down. I, you know, and county DOT and state DOT and our, our DPW and police, I think, weighed in on that and, and felt that was an adequate control to put in place. And it was necessitated, just it probably could have been there to begin with. But um, you're right, there is a lot of traffic there, and I think there were considerations taken into to slow that traffic and provide um, safer uh, left-hand turns. And another, another thing that could possibly exacerbate it, and we don't know the impacts yet, of the senior living that's going in on the back end of the Wombach property, of what kind of additional traffic that that may also uh, produce. So traffic, traffic, traffic is my... Understood. Number. Thank you. Anything else? Well, welcome to around. Welcome to around. I think you grew up in, around here, but welcome to around quite. Oh. Um, okay. Next up, uh, we have uh, anyone who wishes to address the board on this. Um, don't be shy. Yeah, of course. Just make sure we, we know who you are, but just say your name and address for the record. Virginia Stringfellow, eight eight three Whitlock Road. 
And has this already been approved? Because if, if it is, I don't have to speak. Well, no. Um, we've approved. So we've approved. It's funny because you've probably been to many public hearings for this one proposal, understood. And it's, if you recall last year, we were going through a rezone. This was the concept presenting, so I think we knew what we were approving for the purposes of the rezone. I don't think much has changed from that concept. So we have authorized the rezone knowing what this business was. The planning board has approved um, uh, site, plan, site plan approval, Carrie. So the plan, this yes. has been for the planning Final board. Final site plan approval was granted. Yeah, so it's, it's been through multiple reviews. That The board certainly has the liberty. I, I know they've had cast a positive vote in a different context for the project, but we're reviewing this in a, in a tighter lens tonight with mm -hmm. the special use permit. So the short answer is no, nothing is ever final. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I took a little drive from 104 of Wombex down to Norton Street. <coughs> we have, it's exactly 0 0.5, one half mile. And within that five, 0 0.5, half mile, so far, there's three gas stations. There are four convenience stores. Um, each gas station has a convenience store. Then there's one, uh, Golden Farms, where the 7-Eleven used to be on Norton and Culver. And then d uh, heading north in front of the liquor store is Annie's. So that's four. One, two, three, five. I'm sorry, that's five convenience stores. Do we need another one in a half mile? That's concerning to me. I live on Whitlock and another traffic light. I mean, it took me almost 15 minutes to get out of Whitlock during rush hour the other night because it's a big sign that says, don't block the road. And people block it. And you're stuck there. I can't get out. And I have a driving business. I need to be out. So I was. that's just why, that's all I have to say. I'm just very concerned also about the car wash. I don't think we need another car wash in Arondequoit. But I'm more concerned with an extra gas station and an extra convenience store. That's all I have to say. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Um, would anyone else from the audience wish to address the board? Uh, does the applicant have anything they would like to respond to or, or add? Sure. Um, John Sharaba with Hi, Land Tech. We understand the issues of traffic, and we've gone to great lengths working with Monroe County DOT. Um, a lot of people don't understand that travel uh, inter, uh, signal light is not put up by the government. It's not put up by the town, not put up by the county. It's put up by the applicant. Um, there's other upgrades that we're proposing within the right-of-way of Culver Road, turn lanes and things like that. So I think the price tag is coming up near three to $400,000 for just the improvements within the Culver Road right-of-way. So there's a reason why they're here. They, they think this is going to be a successful business. Uh, the proximity to Route 104, um, and as I mentioned before, Quickly's is an organization that is family-run. They're, they're going to be here and want to be here uh, in the town of Veronicoit. Uh, I appreciate Mrs. Wells' comments, and I know that uh, we'll continue to work with uh, uh, municipalities to alleviate any traffic issues. Thank you. And I'll just say this. Um, obviously, you've been in this room many times, but, uh, you know, our just talking with the police department, our, our most successful, I think, and, and it's been successful, is the, is the convenience stores that have a really good rapport with the police department, particularly the officers on those shifts, and I've seen that firsthand. So I just really implore you, I didn't encourage, implore you, develop that relationship, uh, welcome the police department in, encourage your employees to get to know them, especially on those overnight shifts, if, if this is the route the board elects to go. Um, but that that would just be my, uh, what I encourage. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's really effective. I've seen that firsthand. So that's not just lip service. That's good community policing and uh, preventative uh, policing, I think. Any further questions from the board? A cu couple things. John, um, you know, traffic light's going to go, right? I mean, you have a traffic light on 104 that's relatively close, right? So the proximity of the two, when you do traffic studies, what what is the uh, advantage of having that light right there? Is it because of backup or, you know, because of across the street with the with the um, the buildings in there, the, the medical buildings, 
you know, like controlling the queue going north and south on 104. Okay. And that's really what the, uh, the, uh, the Parkdale is not a real heavy user. Right. And um, the Quickly's, along with any future development uh, that was proposed, I know it's been on um, the senior projects on hold, was really accounted for. The Quickly is, is the driver of the traffic light. And so we fully understand that. So the volume that we're proposing for Quickly's itself is why that traffic light's there. It cannot be approved without the traffic light. Okay, because I looked at the site. Now, what about Halda? That's not coming into play at all? Excuse, uh, I'm not familiar with The that. Halda, the side street on Whitlock, the first one you no. come in. It's okay. So there's no other access. So, and, and yeah, enter and exit are all going to come right off of Culver Road for for this, for this project. Future development. Okay. The development that's already under construction has no connectivity to this light as well. Yeah. And, you know, the other thing with the, the hours of operation, I mean, when we talk to the police, there's always a concern that, you know, they relatively have issues on 24-7 on places. So that's just a concern I think that we all, we all talked about. I mean, obviously you don't know if that's going to be there, but that's why we're kind of bringing it up. It's, it's a concern that 24-7 is, and I don't know if any of the stations that, they talked about her 24-7 on that road. I have no idea right now. I'm not sure. No, on the, the one on the road, corner. I don't believe so. The chief might know. Nothing on Culver Ridge, anything like that is 24-7. Uh, Culver, the one right on the corner, chief? Okay, that's 24-7. Okay. Um, thank you, John. I have a quick question for Go the ahead. applicant. I'm a visual person, so you were saying that there's going to be um, turning lanes. Can you kind of pinpoint exactly where they are? Will it be at the traffic? Right, traffic so like? um, the exit out of our facility, we're going to have um, three lanes out. So there'll be um, one lane coming in, two going out, one to the north, one to the south. Uh, but within the right-of-way of Culver Road, we're actually expanding it so we'll have a turn lane created into the light, both north and south. Okay. Um, that plan's been developed by another firm, SRF, and is under review currently from Monroe County DOT. Okay. So that's going through its final stages. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. Well, he's chatting, John. Can I ask you another question? Sure. Not to beat a dead horse, but going back to the hours of operation. So a comment was made that if it's open 24-7, it's a safer venue than if it's not. Could you give me some more details on how that would be a safer situation than having, let's say, the whole um, place closed down at 9 or 10 o'clock? I better have Lou answer that thank question. Thank you. <laughs> Because we'll have employees there overnight, the um, property will stay more well lit. And as I said, our experience is police officers will visit, you know, they're, they're a 24 seven operation. They will visit the site, they'll be on and off the site and create more of a safety factor. So our experience is having the employees there and the, the space and the C store lit up provides a safer environment. That's been our experience. I have a question. If in the future, we do have a lot of issues there, I would hope that they would take into consideration changing, you know, your hours. That's that's the, what we're looking at, you know what I mean? In case we have issues, I mean, the, the chief and the police department will tell us that, you know, this place is, you know, we have a lot of calls there, whatever it is. So I just want to take that into consideration for the future. If we do have problems there, I want the owners to at least, uh, you know, hear us out. That, you know, you may have to, you may have to change your hours because we don't, you don't need our police force there all the time because you're having we're having a lot of calls coming there i think we'll know how many calls if we have any at all i'm hoping not but if we do um i would hope that we can work together and um you know and we would certainly and do change that. What, what john said we're a locally owned family yeah. run business we're headquartered in avon new york we needed to have a uh, a meeting to talk about that you'd, you'd have the ownership of the company at that meeting along with myself and others Okay, I'm actually going to pose a question to the town attorney and put him on the spot. I was giving him a little prelude, but um, <laughs> you know, I one thing as we're talking about this, I'm, 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 uh, yes, I, I think I recognize the concerns about hours of operation. I also am concerned about parity with the existing businesses. I know there's some businesses that operate 24 hours, and the question I think is, then is it fair to, if some are allowed to operate 24 hours, uh, are others not? I think what I would ask to the town attorney is. Does the town board reserve the right, if, if it determines holistically that 24 hours of operation is problematic for a number of reasons, public safety, et cetera, could the town modify uh, through a local law the special use permit or hours of operation uh, for C business district for such a types of activity? So the town board couldn't 
through local law modify this specific special use permit after it's been granted. However, it could take up local legislation to modify hours of operation for convenience stores at gas stations generally. So there'd have to be a local <coughs> legislative process to do that. And you'd have to have a public hearing and make the record on the public hearing. It couldn't be specific. It'd have to be all together. It'd have to be general. You couldn't, you couldn't single out a single yeah. gas station for that kind of effort. There's a gas station at Ridge and Culver that we're saying is 24 seven, right? Yes. And we're saying this one can't be? That, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm concerned about <coughs> saying hours of, until we kind of look at other businesses and, and how we're looking at this town-wide. I don't think it might, I'm concerned it might not be fair to legislate specific hours of operation for one location when down the road another is permitted. Now, the question is whether or not other locations should be 24-7, as I think a question the board should consider perhaps in the future. Chief, you had some anecdotal testimony about general problems that we have at 24-hour gas stations. I mean, they were... I don't think the Ridge Culver one is egregious in any of these regards. I mean, am I? I mean, uh, that, yeah, that's correct. Uh, the Ridge Culver one doesn't seem to be too much of a problem, but we do have issues at some of the others along Ridge Road, um, through from uh, Goodman and Eastridge, Carter and Eastridge as well, uh, as well as even further up north, Culver Road in uh, the Seabreeze area. We have had some quite a few calls for service. I mean. Seems like a well lit, which is a planning board concern, but you know, staffed. Yeah, I understand. And I'm my more concern is about the car wash and the hours operations being next to residences. And I know the planning board limited the hours due to the vacuums, but my experience with car wash is the more noisy aspects of it are the blowers, air blowers drying the car off as they leave. And you know, those doors ultimately have to open, they have to dry that car as they're exiting, and that's high velocity noise. And if I would really like to see some concessions on the hours of operation for the car wash. As I think I and I think you indicated perhaps that obviously the gas station might be a little bit more problematic. But I would I would like to I would like to advance at nine o'clock, um, nine p.m. I, I don't know the whether it's seven a.m. to nine p.m. Uh, hours of operation for the car wash is that reasonable? That sounds reasonable to okay. me, Mr. Supervisor. I do have one more question for the applicant. Sure. Um, I was wondering if you would be cons if you would uh, consider providing um, your own security if if the need arise if for the convenience store and the gas station to be open twenty four hours. We will have security cameras day one. That'll be part of the site, and if we needed to go to that route, we'd certainly consider that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? So I mean, I just want to make sure that if it is problematic there I just want as long as we have a we have a rapport and make sure that we address it we'll know um, but it's you know that's all so I want to know is if we can have a conversation that something's got to be done here even I don't you know special use permits one thing but if we have a real issue then I just want to make sure that we can have an open dialogue to address it you know because it, it, it okay we're not trying to get you on the record, but we no, are trying to get we you are. on the record. But that's that, you know, and I pre I appreciate that, but that's a concern. Um, like the chief said, there are some around town that are problematic, and now that we're talking about this, and I don't want to get into that, but we may have to uh, address those stations now. If if the police, I don't want our officers continuously going up to the you know gas stations for public safety. I mean. I don't want to be concerned if two o'clock in the morning I want to pump gas and I got to be concerned about safety of anybody. So, okay, that's all. Thank you. Pete, did you have another comment? Yeah, and I, I agree that I, I don't think we should just be spot. I mean, and if we think that there's a problem with gas stations that yes. are open 24 hours, we should be uniform in our regulation of that and not single out one versus another. And especially when you have one so adjacent to it, I think that that's like arbitrary and capricious just to tell this one it they can't run 24 mm -hmm. seven. And, and, you know, if we don't like the fact that they're open all hours of the day, which I do think is there's a certain amount of convenience to people. I've had to get gas at late hours at night, and, <clears throat> and they're, you know, I was trying to drive around trying to find one. It's not that that's mm -hmm. really easy. So I understand. And I think if we could limit the hours of the car wash, and um, I do believe that, you know, I've seen the Quickly's locations. They're well lit. They do offer services beyond gas, and, and it's security is present, you know, cameras and things like that. They think that that, you know, you want it to be safe as, as well. You don't want to protect your employees. And I think getting a rapport with the police is really important. 
Peter, I would agree with you on that. My concern also is um, with the operation of the car wash, how late um, <coughs> it would go into the night, because I do know, just like you know. Well, I think they've agreed to 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock is yeah. perfect. Right. Um, can I just get a, 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 an affirmation that 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. would be agreeable? 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. for the car wash, car wash yes. hours are agreeable. Okay, very good. Thank you. <coughs> so we'll modify the, the resolution at the end. We're going to take this up at the end of the meeting because we have to do seeker as well, and I want to just make sure it was not all packed in here. So I will. Can I ask yes, one more of question of the applicant? Will your quickly store um, provide vaping and tobacco products for sale? I don't believe we have va uh, vaping, but tobacco products, yes. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. Good good dialogue. Appreciate your honesty. Appreciate the concerns. Um, hopefully we've tried to be attendant to those. Um, I'll take a motion to close public hearing. Moved. And a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Public hearing is now closed. We will likely be calling up a resolution at the end of the meeting. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate your time. Good evening. Um, okay, we can now move on to items for board action under courts. Courts don't move. Item number 18, authorizing grant application from the Justice Court Assistance Program. Motion to adopt. Move. And a second. Second. Uh, Mr. Marion, an explanation, if you will. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. The Welcome. resolution before the board seeks authorization from the board uh, to apply for the Justice Court Assistance Program, or JCAP program. Uh, the town has been successful in obtaining significant grant funding from this program over the past several years and has been able to make improvements to both the interior and exterior of the court facility. This year's application seeks funding for a new surveillance security system. Thank you. Any questions or comments for Mr. Marion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution is adopted. <clears throat> Item number 19, authorizing attendance to the New York State Magistrate Annual Conference. Motion to adopt. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. Mr. Mary, an explanation, please. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, the resolution before the board seeks permission uh, to send two of our justices to the 111th New York uh, State Magistrates Association Annual Conference. The purpose of the conference, in addition to allowing judges to share best practices and address emerging concerns, is for the attendees to obtain the continuing legal education or CLE credits that judges must receive annually under administrative statute. Uh, this uh, comes on the heels of last year when the conference was canceled uh, due to COVID. Thanks, David. Any questions on the resolution in chief? If none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 20, authorizing an employee to attend the New York State Public Employers Labor Relations Association Conference in Saratoga Springs, New York on September 28th to October 1st, 2021. Motion to adopt. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you, uh, Ms. Freeman. Uh, Mr. Vanette, an explanation, please. Thank you. Um, with this resolution, I do seek your approval to attend the State Association's Labor Relations Conference in Saratoga Springs. Um, it is budgeted for, and it will not exceed $1,034. Very good. Any questions or comments on the resolution? I hear none, so all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution is adopted. Item number 21. Amending and restating the plan document for the town of Arundaquite 457 plan. Motion to adopt. Moved. Uh, thanks, Ms. Freeman. And a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Pertico. Don't be shy. You won't be, you won't be doing this for a few months. You've got to get your first and seconds in. Uh, uh, Mr. Vanette, an explanation, please. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, as a result of federal legislation um, known as the SECURE Act and the CARES Act, our um, Deferred Compensation Committee did meet and evaluated some of the options that we could um, amend the plan. And we did amend it um, by vote at the committee level. Two items of note are that um, active employees can now withdraw funds at the age of 59 and a half instead of 70 and a half. And another one is um, uh, parents who have had a child can take $5,000 out without penalty. Thank you. Um, appreciate the work of the committee. This is a good benefit we offer to our employees. And uh, nice to see it's uh, some thought, thought is going into how to make it even better. Uh, any questions or comments? 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 22, approving the Chief of Police to enter into a memorandum of understanding between the Arundaquai Police Department and Rock Dog. Motion to adopt. Moved. And a second. Second. Thanks, Chief Laird. An explanation, please. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, Rock Dog is a Rochester area therapy dog service that works with many of the uh, first responders within the area, different, the different agencies. The service would be utilized by members of the IPD, uh, both sworn and uh, non-sworn staff members, as well as anybody else um, in the town that would be, that feels that they would need the services. Um, they'd be used, utilized for many different things, um, but not limited to critical incidents um, for family members that we may come across for ongoing crit critical incidents uh, long term or just for members of the uh, like I said members of the IPD or uh, the employees sworn and non-sworn um, under the officer wellness and employee wellness programs thank you chief nice nice program any questions or comments hearing none all those in favor say aye 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 opposed the resolution is adopted Item number 23, approving the Chief of Police to enter into a memorandum of understanding between the Arundaquai Police Department and Bavona Child Advocacy Center and other collaborative agencies. Motion to adopt. Move. And a second. Second. Uh, Ms., uh, Ms., uh, excuse me, Chief, Chief Laird, explanation, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, this resolution that's before the board is to allow us to, con to uh, continue our relationship with the Bavona Child Advocacy Center. Um, this is a relationship that we've had for many years. Um, when our young uh, young residents of the town that become victims of crime, it's a one-stop where they speak with uh, forensic interviewers as well as there's medical services, uh, mental health services, not only for the uh, children that are involved, but also for the family members. Um, it is a great organization uh, that we work with, on a, unfortunately, on quite a significant basis and uh, being able to continue that relationship would help uh, not only the children going through very difficult times but also the uh, criminal investigations that are subsequent to that thank you chief and certainly a contract we don't want to we wish we didn't have to approve but we're glad that Pavona is here to provide that service so a good collaboration uh, any questions or comments hearing none all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed resolutions adopted Item number 24, concerning the award of bid for Fox Hall pump station replacement. Motion to adopt. Move. And a second. Second. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Commissioner McGee, explanation, please. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. This resolution would award the rebuild of the Fox Hall pump station to Daxco Pipeline. Uh, Daxco is a known contractor in years past. Um, they recently redid the Seabreeze pump station and Point Pleasant. Um, this bid would award them the contract for $424,944,944. Thanks, uh, Ms. McGee. Any questions from the board? And, you know, these are, we've, we've worked over the past several years to upgrade our pump stations. They're kind of the unsung heroes. We, <laughs> most people don't even know they're there, but they provide a valuable service towards uh, in a number of regards. And uh, we have how many in town? Two dozen? 29 with 29. Uh, stormwater. Thank you. Um, so uh, always needing to be uh, updating them. Uh, we do not want them to Dave, fail. Dave, I have one question. Um, when these pump stations are getting, obviously, under construction, what do we do? Do we have backup going on, or do they? how does that work, Bob or Aaron, please? You know. We typically, while the pump station is under construction, we would do a bypass pump setup. Okay, is that what you do? Okay. So there's no worries, obviously. How long would it be shut down? Do you know? Do they give you an idea how long you'll need a bypass? You know, is it the whole duration of the job? I assume pretty much, right? As soon, you know, as soon as the new pumps are put back in, then okay. they're usually put into service pretty quickly. Okay. So, no, it's not normally the entire. Yeah, it's not the entire project. Okay, it's, but as soon as they remove the pumps and then, okay. Okay, thank you. Any, any other questions? Thank you, John. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution is adopted. Item number 25, awarding bid for the grinding of wood waste. Motion to adopt. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you, Ms. Perticone. <laughs> uh, Ms. Uh, McGee, an explanation, please. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. This resolution would award the grinding and removal of woody debris from uh, the town public works facility to SM Galavan. Um, in this 
um, agreement, they will be reimbursing the town 50 cents per yard for material removed from the facility, which is a, a switch from, from years past. Yeah. So, uh, it's welcome, welcome news. Yeah. Wel welcome change to, uh, <laughs> to our operation. Do we have a revenue projection within that? How much we would be able to... What has it been in years past, Bob or Aaron? Any idea? So in my tenure, uh, this is the first time that we would be compensated for the grinding of woody debris. Uh, within past years, we have been charged up to $5.50 per uh, for this service. Thus, uh, we're talking a $20,000 swing. Uh, where we would have an encumbrance of twenty thousand dollars, that where we would now potentially have revenue of twenty thousand dollars at fifty cents. So, uh, significantly uh, good news. <laughs> wish, wish most things in life work like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, good news. Any uh, questions from the board or comments? Good work, team. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. The resolution is adopted. Item number 26, regarding a fiber optic communication easement agreement with Monroe County on town property located on East Ridge Road. Motion to adopt. Moved. And a second. 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 Mr. Perticone, uh, Mr. Kiley, an explanation, if you will. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, this resolution uh, would affirm the easement uh, on the Department of Public Works property uh, at 2629 East Ridge Road uh, to Monroe County DES for a fiber optic communication line uh, that resides under the roadway at that location. Uh, back when the Department of Public Works uh, was poised to be constructed at that location uh, back in 2017. We acquired that property from Monroe County, uh, and at that time, uh, the county of Monroe uh, and the town uh, did not know that there was a fiber optic cable which necessitated an easement. Uh, thus, now, as we look to subdivide and, and ultimately combine all of the properties uh, to dedicate that roadway, uh, this is one of the last steps uh, to affirm that the county has a fiber optic uh, cable at that location and they have an easement to access and maintain it. Thank you, Bob. Um, any questions from the board? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution is adopted. <coughs> Item number 27, authorizing the supervisor to enter and amend various contracts with vendors for youth, family, and senior recreational programming for summer 2021. Motion to adopt. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. Director Hall, explanation, please. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. This Welcome. contract um, that we bring before the board is with the East Arondequoit School District. They came to us um, looking to offer a baseball camp for our youth next month, and so we're just bringing forward the contract for your approval. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Nice addition to our portfolio programs we offer, so good stuff. Let's keep at it. Uh, hearing no questions, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution that is up is Item is number adopted. 28, authorizing the supervisor to execute an amendment to an agreement with Card Connect Services and leasing of card readers for the Recreation Department. Help me adapt it. Give me a motion. Move. And a second. Second. Thank you. Ms. Hall, an explanation, please. Thank you. Yes, this resolution refers to renting two additional card readers as we look to hopefully move into the new community center in the next few months. We want to be ready to be able to serve the residents, and that would include needing two additional card readers so we could register participants for programs and reserve facilities. Thanks. So we talked a little bit in workshop. Is this long-term, or are we still kind of looking for what the best uh, kind of... Uh uh, hardware is for that? Sure, yep. So this is a short-term option for okay. us. Um, right now, it gives us the ability to switch out machines, see what's best, and then once we move to the community center, we'll be able to see the total infrastructure and see if it's best to purchase them or continue to rent them and trade them out. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution is adopted. Item number 29, authorizing entering into a contract with American Specialty Health Fitness for the new Arundquite Community Center. Motion to adopt. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you, Ms. Romeo. Uh, Ms. Hall, an explanation, please. Thank you. Yes, this is our second contract that we're bring for, bringing forward for approval. And this would be specifically for American Specialty Health Fitness, which is a silver and fit provider. So with the approval of this contract, this would, this would give us the opportunity to be able to offer benefits to those individuals that have silver and fit insurance. And um, in lieu of paying for their membership, they would have coverage under their health insurance. 
Thank you. And uh, this is uh, primarily Excellus customers for this contract, is that correct? Correct, yes, sorry, primarily. Sorry if you said that. I just want to make sure I clarify that. Uh, any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution is adopted. Item number 30, concerning the award of bid for cleaning services at the new Arundquai Community Center. Motion to adopt. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Weiner. Uh, Ms. Uh, Hall, explanation, please. Sure. Yes, thank you. We put the request for this service out to bid, and Duran Cleaning Services came back with the lowest total um, bid amount for 16 months of $62,985. And this is for cleaning of the community center after the community center closes each day. We would not start this service until September, so there would be a prorated amount this year of $20,995. This was a budgeted um, item in the 2021 budget and will be budgeted for in the 2022 budget. Thanks. And just for the record, this is a, a new asset that we're cleaning that the, we've never cleaned Co before. Correct. It's this would be at the right new now. community center, um, a brand new service that we've never needed before and never... Um, provided before. Thank you. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 31, authorizing the supervisor to enter into an intermunicipal agreement with Laurelton Fire Department. Motion to adopt. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Weiner. Uh-oh, who's that? Check your keys. Um, oh, that's all. Sorry. Uh, we had a Ms. Freeman moved the resolution. Mr. Weiner seconded it. Uh, Ms. Uh, Hall, an explanation. Sure, please. yes. This intermunicipal agreement would Four. seek the approval to continue our relationship with Laurelton Fire Department. They provide our department with CPR um, training each year, specifically for our summer camp staff. And now looking forward to the new community center, they would help us to provide this training for all of our staff at the community center. In return for this discounted training, they get um, guaranteed space at McAvoy Park, as well as guaranteed rentals at our Camp Eastman facility. Uh, th thank you. Um, any questions or comments? I want to thank Laurelton Fire Department for their willingness to continue this. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Resolution is adopted. <coughs> Item number 32, accepting a grant to support the Arundaquite Commission Advancing Racial Equity. Motion to adopt. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. Um, this resolution would uh, uh, is advanced actually at the recommendation of Councilwoman Freeman, uh, uh, the uh, chairperson of iCare. Uh, the uh, Aranaquite uh, Rotary has awarded iCare a uh, grant in the amount of $2,705 to support the development of a website for iCare, provide youth leadership development and cultural awareness community forums. So whenever we are gifted money, we need to accept it. I don't know why, but I assume there's a good reason for it. But uh, anyway, very happy to uh, thank, thank the Rotary. They've uh, supported various initiatives, and this will help uh, the commission continue to, to communicate with, uh, with the community. Uh, Ms. Freeman, anything to add? Yes, I just, uh, just wanted to publicly thank Lynn Wozniak as well as the rest of the Rotary members for um, partnering with iCare to continue to make our community uh, more equitable and to let folks know that we are very welcome of all. Thank you, uh, Katrina. Good work. Um, any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution is adopted. Item number 33, approving the special event license for Yellow Jacket Racing Fleet Feet 2021 Rochester Half Marathon and 5K Runs. Motion to adopt. Moved. And a second. Second. Um, Councilman Pertico and Alratia. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's nice what to see these. Do you want to race our cars? No, that's all right. Quite. <laughs> 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 Uh, this, as Barb said, this would take place on uh, Sunday, September 26, 2021. It starts at Maplewood Park, ends in Frontier Field. The most boisterous track of the of the half marathon is along Thomas Avenue and St. Paul Boulevard. We're very proud of that, and it's good to see this coming back. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 34, approving the special event license for the Rochester Running Company, Robin Hood Racing, Run Like Hell 5K. Motion to adopt. Move. And a second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Weiner. Uh, this one I have no excuse not to run it because it goes right by my house, so I have to go. hide in the basement. Uh, this race would take place on... Uh, clerk, where is it? Saturday, October 30th. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. From she has those memorized. 
Um, if that, if you, everyone know when the races are in Aranaquay, call Barbara. Call Barbara. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Okay, so we're going to revert back to um, item for board actions uh, relevant to the uh, public hearing. Uh, Ms. Ivers has provided the board a copy of a, a seeker resolution as well as an updated uh, issuance subsequent uh, resolution to issue the special use permit. Um, Carrie, do you want to just, why, why, don't, why don't we do this, Carrie? Let's uh, take up the seeker resolution. Um, you can address maybe some, some change some stipulations within the special use permit. I want the board to have a chance to review and uh, just uh, let that soak in for a second. But why don't you just, Barb, why don't we take up the resolution uh, for Seeker that was advanced by Ms. Ivers, um, and we'll, uh, we'll consider that and consider the uh, subsequent resolution. Public hearing two, resolution 2A. Regarding State Environmental Quality Review Act compliance regarding a special use permit to operate a gasoline service station and car wash at 2590 Culver Road in a C business district. Motion to adopt. Moved. And a second? I second. Thank you, Ms. Freeman. Ms. Ms. Ira's explanation. Thank you for your hustle. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so the the action is the adoption of us or the issuance of a special use permit. This is an unlisted action for the purposes of seeker. So we um, look at the um, your packet includes um, an attachment that includes part one that's prepared by the applicant and parts two and three that are prepared by uh, by the town in response. As we look at the potential for impacts, um, you'll note that we indicated um, that there is a potential change in intensity of land and we also identified that there could be a potential change in traffic and as we evaluate or look at those potential impacts further um, similar to what was done when the property was rezoned and then in advance of the decision that the planning board made um, with respect to the site plan we went through potential impacts to land use and community character pointed to the fact that this is located on a primary uh, commercial or a primary corridor here in town. There's a mix of uses on this stretch, including businesses, residents, um, offices. And so the addition of the gas station isn't going to have a, a large or moderate impact on the, um, on the existing character or com combination of land uses. When we look at the impact to actual land, we point to the fact that the site is going to be subject to a stormwater prevention, uh, pollution prevention uh, plan and is going to have to um, meet all state requirements and regulations as it relates to stormwater, which will help minimize potential impacts to land. Um, the, the, um, we also look at impacts to water. There's Again, we point back to the, um, even though it's located in proximity to a Class C stream, the project won't have any direct impact on it. When we looked at the potential impacts for traffic, we point back to the traffic impact analysis that was performed um, at the request of Monroe County DOT. The traffic light um, that is being proposed in advance by the applicant is the mitigation to the potential traffic increases that might result from the project. Um, without the traffic uh, signal, the project would, n would not be um, feasible. And so that, that course or that remedy does provide a, a mechanism for mitigation to that identified large or moderate impact. And so it can be addressed. Um, the sites adequately served by existing utilities. Um, and so there will be no detrimental or large or moderate impact there. And then, um, so for those reasons, as we evaluate the, all the potential impacts, we would recommend a ne negative declaration for the purposes of Seeker. Thanks, Ms. Ivers. Any questions on Seeker? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution is adopted. Barb, we can now revert back um, to the uh, initial, original resolution on the agenda on, under this, the uh, uh, special use permit hearing. It would have been 2A on the agenda. Public hearing number 2A, approving a special use permit for 2590 Culver Road in the C Business District. Motion to adopt. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you, Ms. Winner. So after a, a really productive public hearing, I think we're advancing. Thank you, Ms. Ivers. 
And I'll just read into the record because there is an amendment um, to the resolution. I just want to read that. I don't think we need to vote on the amendment because you have it before you. But I just want to make sure that we're being clear. Um, this resolution would approve the special, the special use permit as, as requested by the applicant. Um, it would add the language, um, the town board hereby approves the special use permit for the operation of a gasoline service station and car wash with the following conditions as agreed to by the applicant. The car wash shall be open daily from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., including vacuums. Um, and uh, I'm also glad that we were able to get on the record just a willingness to work uh, with the police department moving forward. I think it's probably the gears are spinning in the head to maybe how we can look town-wide holistically at this, uh, perhaps if it is an issue. I think that's going to be a conversation with Chief Carey and, and the board. So, um, But thank you for the input on the special use permit. And glad yeah, we had questions. I'm glad to see this business coming. I think they're a good business. They presented themselves well. I think there's things people don't like about developments, but we welcome development, and we just try to do it in the most sensible way. So thank you to the board for your input. Uh, any questions on that? For the final time, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution is adopted. This concludes our body of work for... Uh, regular town board meeting of July 20th, 2021. I want to thank uh, my colleagues and my uh, the staff uh, for their help. This was a very productive agenda. I wouldn't want to go anywhere out. And, of course, we all had to audible as my final two agendas. Uh, but uh, I guess you wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, the next workshop meeting uh, with our four board members will take place Tuesday, August 10th, 2021 at 4 p.m. Next regular town board meeting, Tuesday, August 17th, 2021, 7 p.m. Both of those meetings in the Broderick meeting room. Next month you'll have uh, Deputy Supervisor and Acting Supervisor Perticone here and uh, I'm sure the meetings will be much more efficient and thoughtful and classier. Uh, uh, classier. Uh, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's a word. It's been a good ride. I uh, will now take a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Moved. And a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The meeting is adjourned. The last time I'll ever hit Hope you enjoyed this presentation of the Arundelcoit Town Board on ICAT, Government Access. Mm -hmm.